time to play ball. Welcome to the podcast with no limits. Whether it be sports, current events, or random thoughts, this is the place to step in and stay a while. Your host is a proud alumnus of Rio Hondo Prep, a former minor league baseball umpire, and a man with strong opinions. Welcome to the Get Home Safe podcast and your host, Matt Persima. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Get Home Safe. It's a Friday edition of the podcast. Happy Friday to everybody out there. Another weekend is upon us, and it's a rather special weekend. March Madness, right, has been going. uh, Started on Thursday. Well, started on Tuesday, whatever day it was with the first four, but the traditional 16 games a day on Thursday and Friday, 32 total uh, with March Madness. That's really uh, when it officially kicks off for all those people that, <coughs> you know, come up with a, a, a sickness, maybe to miss work, uh, probably the two most called out days of work out, out of the year, the Thursday and Friday, the opening rounds of the March Madness uh, ba- basketball tournament on the, uh, the men's side of things. So uh, we're going to have a, another guest today. Hopefully everyone enjoys the games all weekend. There's more games Saturday and Sunday, a uh, really great time of year, uh, but we got a guest today. That, uh, you know, when, when I think of basketball, especially at Real Hondo Prep, there's a, a, a few, few names I think of. And this is someone on we're going to have today who played Real Hondo Prep basketball uh, for the ladies uh, kind of around right after I graduated. She was in my brother Sam's class. Um, she, she had a great uh, basketball career, great athletic career all around at Real Hondo Prep. And we've had a few, a few ladies on, right? We try to get more and more uh, females and, and just everybody here on the podcast. A lot of Real Hondo Prep talk, obviously, with uh, the audience that I have. And I love going back and talking about some of the people, some of the great uh, names from Real Hondo Prep to catch up, see where everyone's at, see what everyone's up to. Uh, so today on the podcast, I'm going to be joined by uh, Courtney Gagnon uh phrase i believe i said that correctly she can correct me when she comes on uh but gagnon g-a-g-n-o-n is her maiden name she is now married to uh, jeremy phrase they live up in hayden idaho let her give us all those details but i remember when courtney was in high school i think we were seniors she was a freshman again my brother's class three years younger than me and uh we always called her gagne because eric gagne at the time was uh dominant pitcher for the Dodgers at the, at the time he was in his uh, saves streak and everything. And so when, when Courtney would come into the game, me and a few of my buddy, we had, ah, Gagne's in Gagne uh, name was close enough. I guess. I don't know. We're just knuckleheads. Whenever you have young men, young high school, men, young college guys going to, uh, you know, girls sporting events, we get a little rambunctious. I was in charge of the band and stuff when she had a great, uh, her team uh, made a run actually in basketball, went all the way to the finals um, with some, uh, some other friends who've been on this podcast and kind of the circles we ran in, uh, in high school, a couple of years below me, of course, and just a great team to watch. Courtney was a big part of that with a lot of her success on the floor, uh, in basketball. She was great in volleyball too. softball. We'll try to get to all that kind of reminisce about her athletic playing career as she is a mother of two now. And I'm sure one day her, uh, her kids will ask, ask her, Hey mom, did you ever play, uh, did you ever play any ball back in high school? And maybe she can have them listen to the podcast to tell her, tell uh, her story. But uh, we want to hear from Courtney, hear what she's up to. She was involved in nursing after college. She went to uh, long beach state. Uh, We will uh, catch up with her in regards to her career. What's new, what that experience has been like. I know she's uh, again, a mother of two. That's very uh, important part of of uh, her life and seems to be happy up there in Idaho. So I thought we'd catch up and uh, bring her on the podcast to kind of tell, uh, tell us uh, what's been going on and uh, yeah, get another, get another young lady from Rio Hondo prep uh, on the podcast. Cause I get so many guys on here that, you know, go down memory lane and such. We got to bring on a few more of the uh, young ladies on here too. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to our guest, our, our main event today, a conversation with Courtney Ganyan, someone who is a graduate of Real Hondo Prep from the class of 2006. Okay, joining me today is from the class of 2006 from Rio Hondo Prep, was in the same class as my brother, Sam. She's joining us from the free state of Idaho, way up in uh, Hayden, the city of Hayden, Court- Courtney Gaillon Fraze. Hey, Courtney. Got it. I Hi. got it. Nailed it. <laughs> 
how are things going, uh, Courtney? It's, uh, you know, the last name thing. I know what it's like to have a last name butchered constantly and, and yeah. uh, you know, spell check. So that's why you ended up marrying someone with a simpler name like Phrase, right? I thought so, but I get Freezy. I get Frasier. I'm like, there's no R. <laughs> no, not Frasier. Nope. So it still happens. It, I thought I was good, but apparently not. <laughs> I love when people add letters, like yeah. they just, they, they read the first couple and then give up and just say, but uh, yeah, we, we pro probably butchered your name a lot in, uh, in high school back in the day. Gagnon, Gagnon is how yeah, it works, right? Yeah, we kind of just accepted Gagnon because people, you know, family members even called themselves that just because it was easier. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we had a... The, the, the Dodgers had a pitcher at the time, Eric Gagne, who we all That's loved. Right. And so we kind of nicknamed you that in high school, especially when you're hitting all them shots on the <laughs> basketball floor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? You probably didn't I, like it. I do. I do remember that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Courtney, I missed you did already, but um, you were uh, went to Real Hondo Prep in uh, 2006, graduated, played mm -hmm. in a CIF uh, basketball championship game at Long Beach State, where you guys, where you eventually went to college, yeah. um, you, um, you are, became a nurse, you, you recently moved to Idaho, you have two kids, uh, you're married to uh, Jeremy Fraze. Uh, overall, how's, how's life been since high school, I guess? Uh, great, yeah, it's been a whirlwind, I feel like, especially after you have kids, it just goes by so fast, I don't know how I got so old, but that's just life, I guess. <laughs> Is, isn't um, it funny where where people are telling you oh you don't know what how you don't know how fast life is uh, you don't know uh what busy is until you have all these things i i don't have kids i can't imagine uh chasing two little people around all the time yeah oh it's fun <laughs> <laughs> they're great i love them but it's hard work it's definitely hard work <laughs> definitely now what about your parents do they kind of do they give you the whole Hey, this is how you used to be uh, a routine every oh, now yeah. and then. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've definitely um, got what I deserved, especially with my daughter. So she was just like me, stubborn and independent. So yeah, still going through it. It's going to be a fun one <laughs> with oh. her, especially. <laughs> oh, I bet. And how old, how old are the kids? So Everly, Everly is four. She just turned four on March 5th and Ryland is not he'll be two in August. So he's like 18 months. Hmm. Yeah. Well, what we do on this pod is uh, basically just talk to people, have a conversation. A lot of people from Rio Hondo Prep, it's been kind of fun doing that, catching up with people from the class of this, from the class of that, see where they're at now. And uh, so there, there will be some Rio talk, maybe some care talk or whatever. But um, tell me, you guys moved up to Hayden, Idaho. Where yes. is that? And how long have you guys been there? Um, it's in Northern Idaho, that little like sliver at the top of Idaho, about an hour from Canada, believe it or not. Never thought I'd be living up this far North, but it's honestly gorgeous, beautiful right now it's winter. So there's no, um, leaves, but, uh, it's seriously like one of the most beautiful States I've ever seen. So yeah, we're, wow. we were excited to move up here. We moved here in April of last year. And uh, wow, last year, so very recently. And yeah. uh, I mean, what for a lot, a lot of Californians I know are, <laughs> want to get out of this, uh, this state. Uh, I certainly do. I don't have the uh, resources yet, but uh, I know Idaho, Arizona, Texas, a lot of those places are, are similar. What made you guys set your, your hearts on Idaho? Um, well, it, it was kind of decided for us in a way because my sister moved here um, hmm. I think it's four years ago now with her husband and her two kids. So they moved. I was super sad, super like mad at her for leaving us and <laughs> told myself I would never leave California. My husband really wanted to go, but I was like, just not ready. We'll just call it not ready. And um, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier, like that fear of change and just, you know, it's all, you know, is California. So everything else just seems so foreign and, you know, not great, but we started visiting. Um, we came up pretty much every season um, during um, that year and just to kind of see what it was like. And then COVID hit and that was really an eye opener for me 
and kind of made me realize like that I wanted something different and that there was something else out there that really wasn't so bad if you just gave it a try. I mean, it's definitely hard to start over, but, um, but for the most part, it's, it's doable. And I'm fortunate enough, we also brought um Jeremy and I brought both of our parents so we have now both our parents and then my sister so Jeremy is an only child which makes that really easy they just followed us up. <laughs> so <laughs> so you yeah. took your village with you up there we rather did. than you know that's uh that's smart that's a good way to good way to do it probably makes the transition easier yeah I was the last one like my parents were down everyone was down except for me because, you know, I'm stubborn. So it took me a while to get there. And finally, yeah, COVID being pregnant during COVID, all that hot mess just really made me realize that I wanted more of a simple community-based life. So Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, we got a lot to get to, I'm sure, with all that. But are you, yeah. uh, you seem happy. You seem happy with your decision. You were hesitant. But now, after, you know, a year or so, I mean, uh, you're super glad you made the decision. Yeah, we're adjusting well. My kids, you know, thankfully they're young, so they just went along for the ride. And my daughter remembers her friends a little bit, but it's, you know, she's four, so everything's fun and exciting. So it's great. <laughs> yeah. The only thing about Idaho is they got that that white stuff on the ground. That, yeah, that, that, you, you know, know, it is beautiful. It is honestly, I've never seen snow like that. Like I'm used to dirty snow from like Arrowhead or yeah, Big you Bear see that only only lasts for a little while. Like I've never seen completely white and I definitely saw it this winter. It had, um, but it does like after a while, you're just kind of like, okay, I'm done. You know, I can see that happening too, but I actually appreciate that you get to that point where in California, it's just always the same. So you're never like, you know, let's move on from this season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's something I would have to adjust to uh, buy yeah. a lot more jackets. And uh, I, I'm sure I, I'm willing to adapt to it. I am. I think the Lee's uh, or Ken Lee and mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lee, Mr. You know, math teacher Lee, they all moved up to, to Idaho uh, Did they, a few Boise? months ago. I think they're, I got to ask him. I think they're in the Boise area. Yeah. Most people who moved to Idaho moved to Boise. It's becoming like little California, like a <laughs> California remade, but People don't go quite as far as we did, but my sister was the one who kind of introduced us because it, it does get colder up here. There's probably more snow here than in Boise. Now, now your your last name, Guyon, it, it it if you if I remember correctly, it is Canadian, isn't it? Well, yeah, my dad what grew up in Maine, off the border of uh, Maine and Canada, so oh. French Canadian. Yeah. yeah, my grandma, my mother's mother, who I never met, uh, passed away very early in life. But um, yeah, French Canadian. My mom always always told me that. Uh, Der Der Wang, I think, was her her um, last name. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, she kind of always pointed out to me the French Canadian names whenever I heard. I was like, I know, mom. I know, I know uh, that <laughs> that person is a uh, it's French Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so a pre okay, a pregnancy during COVID. Yeah. Um, I heard from a, a lot of other people that it was tough because some hospitals would only allow certain people or certain, you know, the, the husband being there. And like, what, what was that struggle like ver the COVID pregnancy versus the, uh, the, the pre COVID pregnancy years before? Yeah. Um, I, well, I think cause when it all started, you know, we didn't really know, I mean, from what everyone was saying, we're all going to die and hmm. you know, nobody, I think for me, I was like, well, I don't know if I were to get COVID, like what this does to pregnancy, because there weren't a lot of studies. And obviously I'm a nurse. So I'm in the hospital. Um, there was a lot of like confusion and, you know, they were saying one thing, doing another, and it just changed so often. So it was like, what do we believe? That was like the first couple months. After the first couple months, I realized things were not as they necessarily appeared and what people were saying, you know, wasn't, it wasn't matching up, but anyway, so the fear did go away, but, um, but it was, it was tough because I'm working in the hospital. Um, everyone's panicking, you know, people are out buying masks like left and right. Um, and I'm in the hospital with actual patients. Thankfully I'm, you know, I'm not on the COVID floor. I wasn't, I'm a NICU nurse. So it wasn't like a high, high risk floor, 
but at the same time we did go to the general floors to float and stuff and um but they were actually like limiting our our masks and they wouldn't actually allow us to wear uh, n95 masks and um in the beginning they wouldn't let us wow. <laughs> they were hiding those masks from us because they weren't enough basically so um it went from that to now you have to wear a mask and do all this stuff so it was just it flip-flopped really um which made me realize this this something else is going on here but we won't talk about that if, you know, sure what? sure no i just i knew there'd definitely be uh challenges and i'm sure as a you know like the visitation thing like yeah one thing that just broke my heart was hearing like people because I've been there with relatives who, who pass away in hospitals and stuff. And yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. To not be able to visit those people. Um, that to me was just completely unacceptable. Um, and, and we were just like, what are we doing here? Uh, yeah. I mean, I know everyone's freaking out, but that was just so, uh, that was so hateful in my opinion that people would have to, to pass away uh, by themselves because they weren't allowed visitors. So those are my two cents, you know, uh, what yeah. did you say in, in, in you nurse? NICU, neonatal Nic ICU nurse. Oh, okay. So what, what exactly uh, does that, or not exactly, but what, what type yeah. of nursing is that? So basically I, I take care of infants usually immediately after birth. Um, they can have any issue where they're just born early or they could have respiratory distress. They could have um, heart defects. They, you know, um, sepsis. These are all things that happen after, immediately after birth. So we, like in the NICU that I was at, at Hogue Hospital, we took care of infants as um, little as 24 weeks gestation. So a normal pregnancy is 40 weeks. A full-term pregnancy is 40 or 38 is term. But these babies come out pretty much three months early. So they are underdeveloped and very small, sometimes up to like a pound. Um, so we basically just try to recreate the womb and uh, sustain them until they can grow and develop like they would have in their mom's womb. So that's what I do. Um, and I worked at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach doing that. It's not one of the highest acuity hospitals, but it's like a step below. Wow, that is, uh, that's amazing. I, I didn't yeah. realize, you know, there was... Well, I guess I should realize special nurses for those types of three, three months early. That, yeah, that is. Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, that is um, amazing now what they can. Yeah, do. definitely. Modern, modern medicine and science. Uh, it does actually do some good things, which is a <laughs> whole other subject. But so yeah. what's it like for you as a nurse working with these children that weren't even supposed to be born yet and to see kind of them uh, develop. And I mean, you're all they know in the world, them and their mothers, of course, but I mean, you're around these, these infants that are, uh, you know, is preemie, is that the right, the right term? Preemie. Um, yeah, pretty yeah. Much true. yeah. I mean, what is that like emotionally seeing that every day? Is it, is it, does it uplifting? Is it upsetting? What's it for like them, for nurses? Yeah. For the most part, I really love the atmosphere in the NICU. I would say people say, oh, that's so sad, but actually I would say, 99% of the time, it's actually a very happy unit. Um, there are cases that are very sad, but um, for the most part, uh, I mean, it's just crazy. For example, we had, um, I did not take care of this baby because I was not a nurse yet, but we used to have a little baby. He was not a baby though. When I met him, he would come on his birthday every year back to Hogue and um, bring a birthday cake on his birthday and the nurse's food because they took care of him. He was a 24 weeker and a 24 weeker 10 years ago. So he was 10, like 10 years old, still coming back to the hospital to thank the nurses for taking care of him. And um, so 24 weeker, which they did not expect to live. And he ended up thriving and he's a normal kid, very smart and still comes back to thank his nurses. So it's just like you form these bonds with families because he was probably in the hospital for the first three months of his life. And it's one of the, you know, anyone who's a parent knows that watching your child go through something like that, watching them be attached to, you know, IVs, 
um, just breathing machines, all these things. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's heart wrenching. Um, as a parent, you just don't want to see your child have to, even though, you know, you know, they're not going to remember when they're older, it's still so difficult because you can't do anything as well. So um, just being a part of that journey with families is really cool. And you get to connect with some really um, fabulous people and families and just make a real big difference in their life. Um, so I'm still in contact with some families like through Facebook or whatever, um, depending on, you know, how long they were there. Some people are there for like a week, you know, and that's still hard for families. Like being a, in a hospital for a week is still like traumatizing for some of these families. It really is. <laughs> oh, so, Wow. Well, that is, uh, that's really inspiring. I can't imagine um, being, I mean, in charge of a, a little tiny person like that, that somebody else's that again, has some uh, well, I don't know, health issues, but has come out early. And, you know, there's a lot of, I don't know, it seems to me like there would be a pressure there for you guys. Uh, but it sounds like you're trained and you guys love what you do. So it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have always loved this area. I, I didn't do what most people do and go to like med surge and just do a general floor. I knew immediately I wanted to work in the NICU. I, I just really connected, um, when I did my in nursing school, you do like um, days in the NICU. Um, I only got a day in the NICU in nursing school, but you can do other floors for like three months and you're basically like going to the hospital and following a nurse and helping and stuff like that. So I just knew that this was the area for me. And um, I did it before I was even a mom. And I felt like I was a pretty compassionate person before. But after I had children, I feel like it really flipped a switch in me that made me like a better, I would call myself a better nurse because I, I finally understood that level of like, you know, just mama bear status. Like you just, that connection that you get with your own child, there's just nothing like that. So I felt like I had a whole new level of empathy for these parents who were going through that. Wow. that Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And did you say that, um, you uh, knew you'd go this route in nursing uh, since college or were there other avenues that you explored? Um, no, well, I did nursing school and I had to be trained. You know, I would have um, semesters in each field of nursing basically. And then at the end, the very last semester you get to choose which one you would like to, I would say shadow a nurse. So I chose NICU and I was fortunate enough, I, sh I was able to shadow a nurse at Hogue. We really hit it off and she was just like my advocate and she helped me get a job at Hogue right out of nursing school. So I never had to go to like a med surge floor, prove myself. I was able to be trained right away as a NICU nurse. Wow, wow. So you yeah. kind of, you're one of those people that knew exactly what you wanted to do in life and kind of pursued it and, and it worked out. It's not that way for everyone, Courtney, just so you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I am grateful. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that is great. Um, and so the move, when you moved California to, uh, to Idaho, uh, I got to ask, are the people up there, are they like, Oh, another Californian is up here or are they kind of like, man, she worked in the, the NICU down in, in California. She's very valuable to us. Kind of what was the reception of uh, the phrase family up there? Um, in the hospital. Great. Um, I'm pretty sure that 80% of the hospital is from California. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that going on. Um, there is a little bit of a, I would say, a hesitation from some Idahoans who have been here their whole life um, with the changes because, you know, they just don't want things to change around here, which I get. Um, but there definitely are a lot of I would say a lot of California people who, for the same reason as I did, came up here looking for a little bit more simple and um, let, um, communion with more like-minded people up here. So yeah. a better, uh, a better so life. The hospital's say. great. Everyone's really nice, and I don't have any issues like that. So, do you happen? To, what's the population? Hayden, Idaho. I mean, ballpark. Do you happen to know? A couple, couple thousand people. Yeah, I'm just curious because everywhere I, I go out here, it. there's cars in, in LA County. I'm like, we have millions of people. 
They're so ridiculous. I doubt there's much of a, you run into much traffic up there. Oh, well, there is traffic, but it's because we got one road, one main highway. <laughs> <laughs> um, one stoplight town. Yeah, and people complain, people who've been here a while, they're just like, traffic's so bad. And I'm thinking, well, this is great, but I don't know what, you, you don't know what traffic is. Yeah, so, no doubt about it. let's see, Hayden, um, fifth, well, in 2020 was 15,000. Wow. I think it's changed. It's changed That's uh, my college graduation, like that, yeah. many, that, many, that many people. Wow. It's crazy. It's that's my, that's a nice community for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, God bless the work you're doing, uh, you know, down, down here and up there, of course. And it uh, sounds like life is, is pretty good. Uh, let's go back in time a little bit, if you will, if, we, sure. if you're up for it. Um, you played at Rio Hondo Prep. You played uh, all sports as everybody does. Uh, first off, when you tell people, do you find it a struggle when you kind of explain to people where you went to high school and what it was like, uh, the, the small classes, all the sports you played, all the traveling you did? Is it hard to explain to people who have no idea what Rio Hondo Prep is? Um, definitely. I feel like the older I get, though, the less people ask me about high school, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, it's <laughs> just a signal that you are getting old, but, uh, people ask about college now, but, um, but yes, it's definitely a struggle. Even trying to explain it to my husband, um, was like, you just, you just have to like experience it. Anyway, he has been with me a couple times to care. And, you know, I've been to some alumni games and I'm like, hi, hi, hi. He's like, you know all these people i'm like yeah <laughs> you <don't> you, <laughs> it's like a it's like a small town basically i yeah. mean everyone knows everyone um i was uh, incredibly blessed just with all the experiences we had uh yeah. i mean i don't know how many times you find yourself like oh yeah i've been there before or oh yeah i've done that before and it's just like what how and i'm like well i went to a very unique high school so i'm grateful for all those experiences for sure Oh, me too. Definitely. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do all that anywhere else. So it's pretty cool that all the things that we were able to do throughout our, you know, experience at Rio. So now did, did you participate in, in care youth league before Rio Hondo prep? And if so, who, what are your earliest memories of that? Or maybe some coaches or whatever. So I started in second grade. Um, my first coach was Mrs. Kirby. And then I had Miss Ginger for a long time, um, quite a few years, which she ended up also coaching me in high school, which was funny. Um, and then I had, I went from her to Mrs. Martin, which I don't know if you remember Mrs. Martin. She was, um, she was my coach in junior high and she passed away in the car accident, married to Mr. Martin, of course. Pam Martin, yeah. Um, so she was my coach. Um, when she passed away. And then I had Mrs. Joe after that. Wow. Wow. Some great names there. Um, mm -hmm. You talked about Miss Kirby and Miss Ginger. So it sounds like, were, were you one of those Atlantic pirates? Oh, yes. Yes. I oh, was. <laughs> too many of them on this podcast. It's an epidemic. Pirates everywhere. <laughs> Atlantic pirates. Oh, big rivalry. Uh, big rivalry. Uh, I wish they had the team name still, but uh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, and then I believe Ginger um, ended up coaching you guys in high school yeah. uh, during and that Ms. great. And Miss Lenny too. And Ms. Ginger, yeah, Miss Lenny, right? Miss Lenny as well. Well, she did, I guess, um, cheer and she did like the cheerleading stuff. Oh, okay. No, but I met yeah. Gin, uh, Ginger coach you as a kid. And then when you guys played basketball, right? I think she helped the, or her and Mr. Parker yeah. or whoever it was. I think, yeah. Mr. Parker. Uh, yeah. So we'll get to all that. But so you talked about Mrs. Martin for my class. Again, I was a few years older than you. Uh, those girls just worshiped her. And we were, I think, ninth grade, maybe ninth grade, the, the day that that happened. And I just remember seeing the girls in my class just completely devastated. And I knew who she was, but uh, she obviously didn't coach me or anything, just my classmates. And she was actually your coach when she passed away in that car accident. Yeah, I wasn't in Rio at the time I waited one year one more year before which I almost it made me sad because I you know I would have 
gotten to know her more, but that probably would have made it even harder. But mm. um, so I was in her care youth league team, but then she also had a group of girls that was at through Rio. I waited until after sixth grade to go to Rio because I was finishing with my elementary school, I guess you could say. Um, and yeah, she was my coach. I was actually at Mrs. Ginger's um, college graduation, waiting for Mrs. Martin to show up. She was gonna, she was gonna meet us there, and she never showed up. She mm. got in the car accident. So yeah, it was I, a very sad, very sad time. It was, and I remember uh, Rick Johnson and Valerie Johnson were getting married that day. And there was talk about, are we still doing that? And, and the show went on. Right. But yeah. there was definitely, um, I, th I don't think anybody told her until afterwards, uh, which is probably nice. for the best, yeah. but, uh, yeah, yeah I that was such a crazy, sad moment. Um, that I can't believe it's been, uh, whatever it is over 20 years now, um, back in 99 or whatever. But, uh, so you seventh grade is when you went to Rio. That's actually when I started too, kind of late. I just made miss uh, made the boat, I guess. And yep. um, what was that like for you? You going to Rio for me? It was like, okay, this is a little different. What were your early experiences of of Rio? Kind of was it shock? Was it like, oh, this is just smaller, or what was it like? Um, I don't know because I think because I was in care so long, and I I knew some of the girls. It wasn't like it wasn't that big of a shock I would say but um I mean I enjoyed it I I didn't mind the the crazy rules and I was pretty um motivated to like I I just like playing sports so I was I was like a hard worker I liked being busy so it was yeah. right up my alley <laughs> no that's that's a good way to put it like to stay busy w was a good thing and yeah. it was cool that we got to do it you played every sport you had to learn yeah. some instrument or, or sing or be in drama or so you had we did all these things and you're almost too busy to really worry about other things and and i was that way too i was like wait what rule do you want to okay fine i whatever i'll do the rule uh but i, I just want to play play these sports or whatever so um you know now you look back and maybe it's like well we could have or at least I could have, I know I could have had different viewpoints maybe, but it was, it was a good time. I enjoyed, I enjoyed Rio. And, um, were, were you, were you, were you always into sports? I know, I know not, not all, uh, young ladies love playing sports, but at Rio, you kind of are forced to, but you've always kind of been, uh, yeah, I, involved wasn't, playing. I wouldn't say I was forced. I liked it. I, I did like it. Softball, not my favorite, yeah. <laughs> but I really liked, you know, volleyball, basketball, and I even liked, you know, doing the cheer and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, that was never like a theory as serious at Rio, but it was still fun for me. I love dancing. So it, it, that's always been a part of like me, like in college, unfortunately, you know, I didn't play sports. I did, um, salsa dance and line dancing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, wow. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> So. It's a good time to do that stuff is, uh, yeah, in college for sure. <laughs> what, uh, yeah, you, you take for the, the girls at Rio, for instance, it's like you go play a basketball game and then all of a sudden they're cheerleading and it's just like, yeah. like within an hour of each other, it's like, wow, you know, that's just an example of the type of stuff, uh, curriculum really, uh, yeah. at Rio. Um, when you were young, freshman, sophomore, what somewhere in there, uh, the girls were actually winning some volleyball titles in, uh, 2003, 2004. Some yeah. really good teams. You just missed out on uh, on those great volleyball teams, right? Being a you sophomore, did. yeah, bummer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, basketball. I thought where Courtney, you really shined, especially in that senior year of two thousand six. We were pretty rowdy cheering you guys on. You guys um, were great. That was like the best crowd that championship game. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, all those playoff games. You know, we 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 flood the arena with all our red shirts red and the band yeah. And, <laughs> and yeah you guys made it all the way to the finals uh played at the long beach pyramid um ultimately lost to valley christian academy from santa maria uh, not sure what happened up. we kind of fell apart in that game but that's okay it was a good experience yeah. <laughs> definitely what was that playoff run like for you guys i mean you think you won four playoff games to get to that championship game and uh, the things I remember you, you, I felt every time you shot, it was going in, you didn't shoot a ton, but like every time you shot, uh, Valerie Monoblanco burying threes from the, uh, yeah. the outside, 
Christian Yam is getting rebounds. The Michelle Escara hand on the ball. These are things I remember like it was yesterday. And I didn't even play in these games. You did. So what was it like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely exciting and like an adrenaline rush going through all that. I was devastated when we lost. I was so bummed, especially because the our boys won the football championship that year and That's we're right. just, you know walking around with their, their bling. And <laughs> we had to go home with our head, you know, down and ashamed, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I have no bad feelings about it. I actually really liked that. We, you know, I always thought, Oh, maybe if I would have just stuck with one sport, but the reality is like, I wasn't going to be basketball player <laughs> as much as I would have loved to uh, that was just not where you know God was calling me to so I appreciate kind of being well-rounded and just being able to really experience like the team aspect and you know the work ethic that comes with playing sports and all that good stuff it really I felt like carried with me throughout my life so well said. Very well said. Well, it's amazing what you can find on the internet, especially Max Preps and going way back. Uh, saw a few action photos. We don't need to share those, but I'm going <laughs> to bear you a little bit here. There were some Courtney Guy Guyon stats on there. A 20-point game against Chadwick, a 23-point game against a school named uh, Wildwood, uh, 49 total games played, 391 points, eight points per game, and a shooting percentage of 37 so when your little kids grow up and they're like, Hey mom, did you ever play sports? You tell them, listen to this podcast. I got the stats. I was going to say, I haven't thought about this or heard this in a long time. You're going to send me that and tell my daughter. <laughs> Look what your no. mom did, Penny. She's not going to believe me. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, and, and I mean, just in basketball, you guys really gelled like in the, at the right time. And you guys, everyone had a role and was just, everyone was hot. You guys couldn't miss uh, it felt like, and yeah, it got, got a little colder there in the championship game, but what was it like playing in a championship game? I know it didn't go the way you liked, but it to was play in it at the pyramid. I think yeah. the nerves got us. I don't think, I think that was part of the problem. Um, it was definitely like something we hadn't experienced before being in like the pyramid so big and looks so official. So I think a little bit of the nerves got us on that game, unfortunately, but, um, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you talked about those classmates, those boys in that class who won the, uh, Oh, five football championship. My brother on that team. Mm -hmm. What were those guys like? I want to know, uh, from a lady's perspective here, what was my brother, Sam Hersma like, uh, in high school? Did he, was he a nice guy? Tell me, Ryan, you don't have, to, you, you don't have to lie here. Was he a good, nice guy? Good guy. He was a great guy and he oh. still is. I mean, I haven't talked to him in so long, which makes me sad, but um, I see him on Facebook every once in a while. And I think things are going well. And from what you've told me, um, yeah, but they, the guys were so great for us during that time. They were super supportive and they weren't, they, you know, even though it felt like they were, you know, rubbing the ring in our face, they weren't, they were definitely not but um they were definitely supportive you know got everyone out there the red shirts like they were crazy it was so exciting so um yeah we couldn't have asked for a better group of guys to kind of support us through that so well the, the class of uh 2006 is a great class in my book having kind of a a little insider knowledge there with my brother and everything but great group of guys great group of ladies and uh yeah you guys were all fun fun to cheer for indeed. And, uh, man, it, yeah, to, to fall just short was a bummer, but what a ride it was. And I'm sure just a ton of great memories from the, the basketball, uh, journey there. Definitely. Mm -hmm. What, uh, so that was at long beach state. And then mm -hmm. a few months later, uh, that's where you're going to college. Did you always yeah. want to go to long beach and go there specifically for the nursing program? Um, yes. Uh, the nursing program was, you know, pretty, well-known and, you know, had good reviews. And then I felt like, <laughs> because I had been so, um, I love my family. So I wanted to be close to my family, but I wanted to be like, you know, independent. So it was like the perfect <laughs> amount of away and near and come home on weekends, but still like have my own space. So, um, that was the appeal to specifically Cal State Long Beach, the location and just, <laughs> 
the whole package really yeah you know it's a, it's a great campus and it, it's really hard to go wrong here in southern california with uh, with all the different uh university options but yeah being down there i was actually down there last tuesday watching a friend uh, work a game and um you know it's it's cool to go back and you ever drive by a school or you have it probably but you drive by i drive by citrus or i drive by fullerton i'm like I used to go to school here. I used to walk around here in all those buildings. And now I'm, it seems like so long ago. I, up until a year ago. Yeah. I used to drive by Long Beach and just be like, it's just so weird that this was like my home. And, you know, even though, cause I, I was living in Huntington or West Garden Grove before we moved up here. So it's pretty close to Long Beach and it's just so crazy. Life goes on. There's a bunch of new college students just doing their thing. And, um, Long Beach is actually a beautiful campus. It's, it's really uh, nice and it's pretty big. So um, it's, it's definitely strange driving by and seeing it again. Did you feel any sense of, was it an adjustment period at all to go from uh, Rio Hondo where your class is, is 20 people in your entire class uh, to go to a big university like that, where there's, you know, tens of thousands of students walking around? Definitely. It was definitely an adjustment, but just like anything, you just adapt and get used to it even just the way like I think more nursing school how I even studied was so different (laughs) than what I did in high school it was just nothing the same (laughs) so um yeah it was just it it took a while to get used to but um yeah I adapted and got I kind of grew to love it for a while and and you're you know, really stressed with the those dance classes, the uh, yeah. salsa and the, uh, the the uh the line dancing, right? Yeah, yeah. I well, I took um, it's called social dance, and I just took it a couple times just because I liked it, not because <laughs> I needed the credits. <laughs> and then I was a frequent um, line dance facility person i would go there all the time and just find dance. so help me on this one because because we like going to some country spots too and and i've uh do do you okay so there's some people you either have moves or you don't do you think that line dancing is something anybody can do or is it if you don't have rhythm you just you just can't do it i mean to me it just seems do the same steps over and over again and done a little line dancing i'm no pro like you but can anyone do it i mean you anyone can do it with hard work but it definitely takes a little bit of a, I would say, you know, rhythm. <laughs> especially, Liquid courage especially too, that helps, yeah. <laughs> like the actual two-step with people um, dancing together. Like you have to like learn to like flow with people. Otherwise it's just a hot mess, so. <laughs> yeah. Does does Jeremy dance? Because if, if I take my lady on the dance floor, she's just like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever, uh, you know. Uh, he tries he tries really hard (laughs) but you know we're still working on him I you know we got distracted with kids but maybe when we're older we'll like revisit it and (laughs) no it's it's kind of fun line dancing you go out there it's like I don't I don't like dancing because I don't like any kind of attention or anything but like you go out there and you know you do the uh steps or whatever and you learn like okay and people do it all over the country whether it's California Idaho Texas whatever and uh so yeah, you mentioned line dancing. I was like, oh, okay, I've been in a few, few country bars over the years where where that goes on, and it it's always entertaining. We'll say, yeah, it can be <laughs> definitely be funny. <laughs> for sure, for sure, a lot of stories, and of course, uh, you know, college kids at Long Beach State having a having a good old time for sure. Yeah. Um, w- was college kind of a blur for you because you were so busy and just uh, the the intensity of the kind of the nursing program. Yeah, I mean, it actually felt long because I felt like I was in school forever from like, you know, birth until like you graduate. And it took me a while, even though I knew I wanted to be a nurse, I took a couple years of like, I actually was a biology major at first. And then it, you know, cause you don't get into the nursing program right away. So you just, I was a biology major. I took some classes I ended up doing like a, an internship at a hospital, actually St. Mary's Medical Center in Long Beach. And it was a volunteer. Pretty much I got people water, restocked things, but it, it allowed me to get into the hospital to really see what they did. Cause I didn't know, you know, other than my few experiences ever being in a hospital, like getting my tonsils out when I was eight. And, you know, so I was able to do that for, I think it was like a year or two I did that 
while I was in college. And that really reaffirmed that I wanted to be a nurse. So then I had to get in the program and do all that stuff. So it took me a little longer to graduate than it is possible. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't say the length of time on that. That's yeah. what you right? It just says the year. Uh, well, on the flip side of that, was there ever a moment where you became a little maybe intimidated seeing kind of what, what you're going into and like, man, I'm not sure if this is for me. I, I know in other, other fields, people kind of have that feeling. Was there anything like that for you? I knew that like I had the stomach for it. I know that sounds funny because you do have to have some sort of a stomach for like, I've been to surgeries and stuff like that during my experience and time in the nursing program. So I felt like I had the stomach for it, but boy, nursing school is not a walk in the park. And there were days where I was just like, I want to quit. I don't want to do this anymore because it was hard. It was a lot of studying, a lot of um, just crazy nights with friends, just staying up all night to try to finish care plans and then going to the hospital the next day and taking care of patients. So yeah, there were times I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore, but I'm stubborn. So I always stuck with it. So, so you use that stubbornness in yeah. a positive, use your powers for good, right? Yeah. You just stick it out. Interesting. It's worked out for me. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot to ask this, but kind of backtracking a little bit, you know, real Hondo prep graduates, I think a lot of them go into this service industry. You see a lot of nurses, you see a lot of police officers, firefighters. Um, what for you was some of the biggest things you took from uh, Rio Hondo prep, your experience there um, that you, did it prepare you more for, for life later in college or thereafter? Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, with Rio, we did a lot of service. I mean, we were coaches. We, um, I mean, I remember you guys like digging ditches. I don't know if that was you, but like, I remember our guys <laughs> digging ditches at one point and we would like have times when we picked up trash or whatever. It was just, we would go um, up to Mount Care and help clean, you know, things like that. So there was definitely a service aspect that they kind of instill in you. And I felt like it definitely benefited me later on because I mean, I literally, so when I became a nurse, we had to take this like continuing education about millennials because I am a millennial and um, it talks about how basically we're lazy and we need like, you know, extra love and help and, and all this stuff. We literally, I had to read an article about this and about how I am as a millennial and how to help them in nurse. It's crazy. So anyway, but I feel like I was never like that because care really taught me, like, you don't get things for free. Like you work hard, you play sports, you coach sports, you know, it was, there was never a lot of time to just like be selfish in that way. So, um, so I felt like I definitely got that from, from Rio. And what was the, the first part of the question? I think I got I think, a little lost. <laughs> no, no, no. You answered that uh, wonderf wonderfully. Um, just kind of our experiences at Rio and kind of the service industry. And just like, I, I, when I see, a, I don't care who they are, they're all different, but Rio Hondo Prep graduates, it's kind of something I've ex expressed on the podcast. They're just different. They have a different mentality. They have a different yeah. outlook. Um, they, like you said, nothing's handed to you. And we, and we have, we were fortunate to grow up there because yeah, in today's world, we do, we are in this very uh, feelings, uh, you know, Oh, I don't feel that way. Or I don't feel like doing it. It's just like, what feel feeling? Are you kidding me? Like <laughs> get to work or whatever. So, yeah. um, no, I just basically your experiences with Rio kind of helped how it shaped, helped shape your life later on. Yeah. I feel like it toughened me up, you know, and in some ways, like there were things that that people would say, oh, sheltered you. But I feel like it actually just gave me a good foundation. And yes, there were some things out there in the world. I was like, oh, this is a thing. I have to learn about this. But it also it brought me back to like, okay, what are my core values? What are my, you know, my true beliefs, especially as a Christian? So it, it that's so well said. It made you, yeah, the whole sheltered argument. I never understood. Oh, the, when you get into the real world, well, I think you, you get a good foundation, you go out into that world, real world and then uh, adapt or make decisions best for you. Um, and I think, I think Rio graduates, they're independent thinkers, they're tougher people and they're people that uh, are dependable. And, and that's definitely someone you are, someone I, I hope I am. And 
Um, yeah, this was there any specific leaders kind of looking back that had a big impact on you, or was there too many of them to 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 call out? Um, for me, I was fortunate to have so many great coaches, but what what are some names kind of that you remember? I mean, they were all great, but uh, I feel like Miss Ginger was like, because I am. I can be an emotional person. I'm a very sensitive person, but I think that goes with a lot of nurses. You know, we want to help people and all that stuff. So Miss Ginger, man, she toughened me up a lot. Like I remember going on, um, what are the trips, the, the seven week trip around the U S and I remember I was crying at one point cause you know, we're girls and we just cry. And she was just like, toughen up. She was just like, stop crying. And I was like, what and <laughs> she just called me out and she just told me to like like toughen up and I was like oh okay like she's not gonna hold my hand <laughs> and I love Miss Ginger because she's like that but it was good for me you know like you know I, I needed to hear that at the time so um she she was like a big part of my life and she was a great role model because she was such a tough lady and like she was still kind she was still wonderful and fun but she was tough so she was a great example that is awesome yeah she's super <laughs> nice and but yeah she has i think she has a lot of uh her her father gary lunny in her from that as a, as a teacher and a coach the kindest human on planet but if you messed up uh or or needed a little kick yeah he he'd, he'd be there and so yeah ginger has uh, definitely done that great as a so that's a great story thanks for See, sharing i that. never as a girl i did not see that side of gary because i mr lunny well, Gary sounds weird, but yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lenny, because he was my Latin teacher and so sweet. Like I never saw a bad side of him, so. <laughs> but I don't think he showed that to the girls. I think he saved that no. for the boys. <laughs> I, exactly. Cause he had two boys and he had two, two daughters. So he yeah. kind of, I'm sure he knew, <laughs> but yeah, he was that way. Definitely with the boys on the football field for sure. Uh, <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, Ginger. Yeah. She was on the pod. It was great talking to her about uh, her coaching experience and, and everything. Uh, how did you explain to, to uh, your, your husband, Jeremy? Yeah. We used to go on these seven week trips in a bus and stay at campgrounds. How fun was that? How fun is the, are those trips to explain to, to people? Yeah, I don't even remember. It's so sad. I don't remember those conversations, <laughs> but I know I have explained it to him. Um, and I think he he's just like, oh, that's cool. You know, like yeah. he did get he was, you know, I'll call him spoiled, too. He got to go to like Japan and Israel during his high school, but they weren't like through his school. It was, I think, through a church. So or something like that. So for him, he's like, well, I've done stuff too. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. What were some of the places, whether it was with Rio or maybe just personally that you've, cause man, we've been so many places on these trips and things. Yeah. What were some uh, significant places that kind of uh, made an impact on you uh, on, on your travels or vacations or whatever? Well, Europe was obviously one of the highlights I feel like of my time in Rio and high school and just, we got to see so much. I think my favorite was when we went to Switzerland and I remember um, whitewater rafting down the Swiss Alps and just like all of a sudden you end up in this big, beautiful lake just surrounded by mountains. It was honestly magical. It looked fake. It was just so beautiful. So Switzerland was just great. And that whole trip, honestly, I saw so much. I learned so much. I wish I could remember it all, but yeah. um, I actually got to go back to my husband and I went to not all the places I would have liked to, but it was my cousin is currently living and she lives in England now. She's married a man from England. And so we stayed with her in England and then we were able to take the train over to Paris and I got to do that as an adult. So it was kind of cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, like it's been so long, but I, I still remembered it. And I, you know, all the memories were coming back. But um, but yeah, so Europe was definitely, I would say, the the best memory I have from that time in Rio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same here. Yeah, we did it right before our junior year. Kind of when you know, when you change from that lower classman to upper classman, things are different. And to, to get off that plane after landing, uh, you know, getting back from Europe and it was just like, wow, okay, I'm, I'm ready for, I've seen a lot now and it's uh, you have great memories indeed. 
Um, I, I want to ask, you know, the, these past couple of years have just been, for lack of a better term, just chaotic. I never thought we'd see anything like uh, the things we've seen. You guys yeah. moved away from uh, California, but the world is still crazy. 2020, yeah. 2021, 2022. Um, you mentioned it earlier about kind of not really your views changing, but as you become a mother, you I don't know, maybe uh, the whole COVID experience, that kind of opened your eyes. I feel like for a lot of people, it's not so much their views are changing. It's just like the craziness around us is getting so much. What has the past few years been like for you just overall? I always like asking people who, have, because we've all been through craziness these past few years and just kind of how have you adapted and gotten through it all? Yeah, I feel like um, I, I have changed a little in the sense that I feel like I've grown up and I've paid attention to things that I never paid attention to. Like, this politics they've always been there it, it kind of re repeats every you know so many years the cycle begins again but I was just that wasn't something I was ever interested in so now as I pay more attention to the politics and just what's going on in the world I I think I had such a small view my world was just like my here and now but now I'm seeing it maybe it is because I'm growing up or becoming a parent I don't know but I'm realizing like, wow, there's just like a lot going out there in the world that I just never paid attention to. Um, it's definitely changed in that way for me. I started actually watching the news. I used to just be like, oh, the news depresses me. So I'm not gonna watch it. Although I don't watch the news too much. I now find <laughs> most of my information other places because yeah, yeah, we won't go there. But, sure. uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just was so, I would say, naive to like what was actually going on, um, even just becoming aware of like what was going on in my community, like all of a sudden during COVID, I had a lot more time on my hands, we'll just say that, so I would read articles and listen to the news, what's going on in like my community, it's like, someone's murdered here, someone's dying here, it's just like, didn't realize how much actual crime was in California until you, I mean, there are a lot of people, but um until you start really paying attention to it it's just like I guess a healthy fear of the world and just that realization like especially becoming a mom that protective part of me that's like I don't want my kids to have to worry about this like they're gonna have enough issues growing up and and thankfully I feel like I was protected from that a little bit but it happens I don't want them to be totally sheltered but I want to be able to instill a foundation in them um like I got through Rio um and so that way, when they do go out in the world and face these problems, they, they know, you know, they know God, they know what their beliefs are, and they know how to be tough and combat that. So that's kind of like my realization over the last year. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, man, again, well said, you've had a couple of really good uh, statements here. And, and I feel like I've seen the past year, specifically, a lot of parents Parents are kind of stepping up in big ways, whether it's school boards, whether it's uh, city city council, whatever. A lot of parents are frustrated the past few years uh, with a lot of different things. There's nothing, not one specific thing. And we're starting to see like, uh, I don't know, a mom revolution or something. And yeah. uh, it's it's awesome to see. I'm not, again, I'm not a parent, but to see uh, moms and dads care so much, that has really been motivating and inspiring to me. So it sounds like uh, you find yourself maybe in that in that boat. Yeah. And a big part of like us moving too was, you know, realizing that I could potentially, you know, homeschool has been a big thing that is kind of coming to people's attention. Like, am I going to homeschool my kids? I'm still not sure yet. I'm not sold, but I feel like now it's actually like, at first I was like, no, I can't do that. Like I'm not a teacher, like, <laughs> but now I'm like, well, maybe I can. Um, it, but it would have never worked for us as a family if we had stayed in California. It wasn't an option because I had to work to just live in our house, you know, so out here we have a little more freedom financially, where if when that time comes like I might be able to actually do that now. Um, I'm still looking at schools and stuff, but, uh, you know, it's a, a possibility out here, which is great. Definitely. I'm sure you guys aren't paying $7 a gallon in gas like we are down here, but uh, I was like, oh, the gas price is so high. It's $4. I'm like, it's seven here. Four. Yeah, I, I cannot even believe that. It's just crazy. 
I, it, I know. It looks like now our, a, a our price is what you guys were like two years ago. So yeah. <laughs> and that feels high. <laughs> Oh, it, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, just again, yeah, it's a, to be a parent in this time has got to be, uh, got to be a blessing, but also a lot of craziness. And you guys sounds like things are going great, Courtney. It's been a blast catching up and, and chatting with you here today. It's been a while, uh, just really happy for your, your happiness, the whole, uh, guy own and uh, phrase family moving up there, uh, two kids, uh maybe more along the way we'll see or just uh maybe yeah. one more <laughs> <laughs> i'm not awesome. there yet though <laughs> then they got mom and dad out outnumbered though see then it's three to I two know. you only got two hands i'm not sure i'm not sure if it's possible but <laughs> and you deal with kids all day at, at your work so i do it really makes woman. me laugh when my husband tells me it's your turn to change a diaper i'm like do you remember what i do for a living i mean i change diapers all day <laughs> Oh, so you're okay. So you're playing that, those points. Okay. Well, yeah, he can't take his, his work home or maybe he does. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> he's in construction. Oh. So he always does. <laughs> oh, so there you go. Is there next, you need uh, something fixed at the house. He could pull that one on you. Oh yeah. Oh, do you know, I have a, I, do? I have a honey do list for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Hey, uh, my best to the family. Uh, your parents were always super kind people and just uh, always seemed happy. Uh, at games and such so uh it's good to hear they're doing well and thanks for doing this it's, yeah. it's great catching up with real people and uh God, again god bless you for your work uh you and the nurses but especially your line uh, your specific field uh man that you that that's incredible and just thank you for all that you do oh yeah thank you i love it so i feel blessed to be able to do it <laughs> oh outstanding well uh keep fighting the good fight up there in, in idaho and uh take care courtney this has been a lot all of fun right. Thank you. Bye, Matt. Well, thank you so much, Courtney Guyon Fraze, for coming on the podcast. It was so great catching up with you. It had been so long, and uh, man, doing the Lord's work up in uh, up in God's country, it will say, uh, up in Idaho. So um, it's it's incredibly encouraging to hear uh, people moving out of this state and and into uh, into the good lands, we'll say. And uh, man. Yeah, a mother of two and doing great work in the nursing uh, nursing sector there. Just uh, awesome to see another real Hondo Prep graduate giving back and uh, having a very successful life and, and raising a family and things. So great catching up with Courtney, talking a little bit about the old days, playing hoops and such. Um, yeah, I just can't say it enough. Uh, wish you nothing but the best. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll catch up again down the road, Courtney. So uh, all the best to the family once again. Uh, guys, that will wrap up today's episode of the Get Home Safe podcast. As always, there's plenty of ways to follow the Get Home Safe podcast. Our Instagram and Facebook page is Get Home Safe Podcast. Uh, we also have a Twitter handle, Get Home Safe Pod. And our email address is Get Home Safe Podcast at yahoo.com. For those new to the podcast, uh, we try to do this every Friday, have a conversation with somebody. They're not always real Hondo Prep people, but that happens to be a lot of the people that I know from the past and the, the present. Uh, I also know a lot of uh, sports officials, so you see that a lot. And sometimes I'm connected with someone that I've never met before, but uh, a guest or a friend of mine says, hey, this would be a great person to talk to. So Fridays are dedicated to having that conversation, having a guest. Uh, I also do a show on Tuesdays. It is pretty much just me. Sometimes uh, someone will pop in, but it's usually just me rambling about current events, news from the weekend, maybe some sports topics. Uh, so for those new to the pod, welcome. And I hope you uh, step in and stay a while and will follow us on those social media platforms. Also follow us on uh, YouTube where you can watch the podcast and uh, you know subscribe to it. You can leave comments, you can rate, review, all those things, uh, not just YouTube, but anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, uh, whatever floats your boat, man. Uh, we appreciate it. And just, uh, I, I can't say it enough. The, su the support has been wonderful. So Courtney, thank you for stepping in. Gagne, as we used to call her back in uh, the old high school days. And uh, it was a blast. It was a blast catching up. I said that plenty of times. It's time to go into the weekend. Enjoy the March Madness, friends. It's a great time of year. Hoops everywhere. Buzzer beaters, upsets. Man, March Madness, it's the best. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy all the, all the basketball. Enjoy family, will you? Enjoy uh, maybe not having to pay the $7 gas prices we do here in California. Whatever you do to enjoy yourselves. Have a great weekend, everybody. And as always, guys, no matter what you're doing, whether you're out on the town or around in third base, get home safe.